today we're going to look at conditional probability and that is finding the probability of an event given that another event has already happened. So we're going to be using frequency tables so I'll show you uh, what this looks like but we're going to use this this word given or we're going to assume that one thing has already happened not the probability not what's the probability of this and then that happening but this has already happened so now what's the probability of this next event happening okay the way that it is written is this slash right here p slash um, a so p stands for probability what's the probability of a given B, that's what this reads, the probability of A given B, and given is your keyword. What's the probability that A is going to happen considering that B has already happened? What you want to do is you want to look for the overlap. What's the probability of A and B, or how many events fit in both categories, A and B, versus how many probability, how many events fit in the given or the second event or the, the, the event that we said had already happened. So it's overlap over given. This is what you need to keep in mind. And I'll show you today they're going to be kind of mixed up. We're going to do some basic probabilities and um, then we're going to do some given probabilities. Okay, So I'll show you the difference between them. So we have this table and we have uh, red and blue triangles and rectangles and so the question says first let's start because we're in the baby step through this what is the probability that the shape is a triangle okay well remember probability is what I want to happen over what can happen so I have a bag full of red and blue triangles and rectangles what's the probability that I'm gonna reach in the bag and draw a triangle I don't care what color the triangle is I just want a triangle well there are 12 triangles there are 14 rectangles, which means that there are 16, or excuse me, 26 shapes in the bag. There are 15 blue shapes, and there are 11 red shapes. So you can see how horizontally they add to 26 and vertically they add to 26. So I'm just doing this because these all of these numbers are going to come together. So what's the probability that I'm going to draw a triangle? I don't care what color, I just want a triangle. Well, there are 12 triangles in the bag, and there are 26 shapes in the bag. 12 over 26 reduces to 6 over 13, and that would be my fractional probability. So we'll just stick with fractional probability right now. Okay, now, what's the probability that it's red? We have one thing going on. We want it to be red. Okay, well, we said that there are 11 red shapes out of the 26 total shapes. So 11 over 26 can't be reduced, so they are, it's 11 over 26 is the probability that choosing the shape is red. Again, just single probability like we did the other day. Now, what's the probability that it's a red triangle? Still, they're both in the bag, everything is in the bag, and I want a red triangle. So what's the probability that I'm going to choose a red triangle? Well, let's go over here and we find. We go, okay, well, there are five red triangles in the bag. There are five red triangles in the bag. There are 26 shapes in the bag. So the probability of drawing a red triangle is 5 over 26. Now, here's where it changes into something different. If a triangle is selected, so I am saying I have already drawn a triangle, so I don't even care about the rectangles anymore. I have already drawn a triangle. What is the fractional probability that the selected triangle is red? So what you're going to do is you're looking for a red triangle. So how many red triangles are there? Okay, it has to fit both, right? The probability of both. So we want to be a red and a triangle. So we're just looking at triangles because I restricted it. I already pulled out all the rectangles. All I have is red and blue triangles in the bag. So I've already selected the triangles. So now there are five red triangles in the bag and I've already I've minimized it down there are 12 triangles in the bag given that it's a triangle okay so this is one way you can word it if a triangle has been selected at random that's already happened what is the fractional probability that this selected triangle is red so you only look at the red and you only look at triangles so this is the restriction so you only look at that group so you cover up everything else. We only look at the triangle column 
and then we care about red and blue. And the probability that I'm going to get a red triangle out of the triangles is 5 out of 12. 5 red out of 12 triangles. Okay? That is conditional probability. This is basic, basic, basic conditional because this depends on that I have already limited it to the triangles. Okay? So this table gives the distribution of ice cream flavor and topping options for customer orders at an ice cream shop. So back to the basics. What is the probability of an order being vanilla? Well, let's get some totals. Since we're looking at vanilla, um, I have 30 uh, vanilla with sprinkles and no sprinkles. So there are 40 total vanilla orders. There are 80 total chocolate orders. There are 100 twist orders. So there are 220 orders total. 60 and 30 is 90 and 90, that's 180. And then 20, 10, and 10 is 40. Okay, so both of those numbers horizontally and vertically. If you don't have totals, then create totals, okay, because you need them. Now, what's the probability that of all the things that got ordered, I don't care, what's the probability that of all the ice creams that got ordered that it was vanilla? Well, we look over here, we have 40 vanillas total were ordered. 40 vanillas out of 220. Okay, so we want to reduce that 40 over 220. We want to reduce that fraction is 2 over 11. You can also go to 4 over 22, cancel the zeros, and then you can go to 2 over 11. So the fractional probability of choosing vanilla is 2 over 11. What's the probability of an order having sprinkles? Just sprinkles. Of all the orders that have been placed, what's the probability of having sprinkles? Well, there were 180 sprinkles ordered, ice cream that had sprinkles, out of the 220 orders. So 180, so we're down to 18 out of 22, right? That can reduce to 18 over 22. Do some mental math here. That would be 9 over 11, or 82%. Right? We can see that of, of all the options, that's what we've got, right? And then what if it's vanilla and sprinkles? So what this is, again, this is a combination. Like, I don't care which one, it's vanilla and sprinkles. So again, out of all of the ice cream you ordered, what's the probability that they ordered vanilla and sprinkles? So vanilla and sprinkles, right, where they both, where they both mix is 30 of the 220 was vanilla and sprinkles, which is 3 over 22, and that can't be reduced anymore. So those are all our fractional probabilities. Now, <clears throat> this last one, if a customer order is selected at random, what is the decimal probability of selecting an order with sprinkles given the flavor is vanilla? So we, anytime you see that given word, right? Given, that means you're going to start restricting what you're looking at. So we're going to be given that the flavor is vanilla. So I care about this column right now. That's my main column. Given the flavor is vanilla. So of the 40 vanilla, of the 40 vanilla, how many of them had sprinkles? We're only looking at the vanilla row. Okay, because I said, given that the flavor is vanilla, so I'm taking the chocolate off the list, I'm taking the twist off the list, all I'm looking at is the 40 vanilla. So what we want to look at now is which ones had sprinkles in the vanilla column. So sprinkles in the vanilla column, so in the vanilla row, we had 30 that had sprinkles and were vanilla. Okay, 30 that had sprinkles and were vanilla. So the overlap, what meets both of the requirements. Now that it's vanilla, how many sprinkles? So we're limiting, when we do this conditional probability, we're taking this bigger um, pool of things and we're separating it down and we're saying, okay, what's the probability that I'm going to choose a freshman out of my class? But then what's the probability that I'm going to choose a freshman guy out of my classes? So then if I separate, given that he's a freshman, what's the probability? Or given that it's a boy, what is the probability I'm going to choose um, a freshman. So we're splitting our things into groups. 30 over 40 reduces to 3 over 4. Look for that keyword right there. Okay. What is the probability of one given that another? So look for that isolation where you're taking a big group of people and you're separating them or things. Okay. So suppose a case study of car accidents and drivers who use mobile phones produced the following data. Given 
Uh, complete the table, so I've already completed it for you. So what I what you can do is you've got your horizontal and your vertical totals. So I took 325 and subtracted 45 to get the 280. 70 was the total who had a car accident, 45 of that with the phone, so 25 without. And then um, 685 minus 405 gave me this 280. And then they should match up horizontally, and then they should match up vertically. Okay, so if you don't have your whole table, then you'll need to complete your table. The first question says, what's the probability that a driver did not have an accident? Everybody on this table is a driver. Okay, so we're looking at all of the drivers. Everybody is a driver. Okay, so we want everybody is a driver. But we want the drivers who did not have an accident. So you go to your table, you find your did not have an accident. Okay, that's this column right here. There were 685 who did not have an accident out of the 70, 755 on the table. So 685 divided by 755, or put that in ratio, your fractional probability or your decimal probability is 0.907. Right, that's 0.907, or if I ask for it in percent, it's 90.7%, about 91%. <clears throat> okay, so the people they asked, not many had accidents. Now, look at this next one, how it's worded. If a mobile phone user was chosen, so we're, we're minimizing it. If a mobile phone user was chosen, so using a mobile phone, so we're only going to look at these people. If a mobile phone user was chosen, what is the probability that they had an accident? So using the phone is my whole group. So there are 325. Even though I've got all that data on there, I'm not using it all. Okay. So what's the probability now that they had an accident? So look in the had an accident. There were 45 of the 325 that had an accident using their phone, right? They had an accident and they were using their phone. So 45. 45 over 325 is 0.138 or 13.8 percent. Okay, 13.8 percent chance that if you're choosing from a group of people who were using their phone there's a 13.8% chance that you're going to choose somebody who had an accident. Okay, now, that's one way to word it. So this is one way I can restrict it. I'm telling you we're choosing from this particular group. Up here, I was choosing from all the drivers. Okay, this one, I'm only choosing from the mobile phone users. The other way that we can do that is what's the probability that a driver did not have an accident given they were using their phone? Okay. Again, they were using their phone, and this time I want the no accident people. Okay, this time I want the no accident people. So again, there were 325 that were using their phone, okay, and there were 280 who did not have an accident. So 280 divided by 325 is... 0.862 or 86.2 percent. Okay, so conditional probability, you have to look for these keywords. You have to look for something in the problem that gives you the impression that you are limiting the number of people that you're looking at. You're not looking at the total like we were originally. We were looking at all the drivers. We were only looking at the mobile phone users. We were only looking at mobile phone users again on the second problem, okay? Same thing over here, right? We were looking at all the ice cream orders, and then we were only looking at the vanilla orders. We were looking at all of the shapes, and then we were only looking at the triangles, okay? So we're going to use our frequency tables. So it's helpful to circle and highlight like I did, and watch for those words like given and restricting a group. Like if you've already selected this, then what's the probability of something else happening?